Hey everyone, Aaron here. Welcome back to another anime review. Today we look at episode 8 of Danganronpa 3 Future Arc. By the way, guys and girls, I'm sorry if I sound half asleep. I am not wide awake when I'm doing this review. Um, I've had a long day. And in general, though, I will say right now that I'm not going to have very many images up for this one. I'm going to probably have a, maybe two or three uh, just to kind of show progress of the story. But more so, I just wanted to figure to get the review out as soon as possible. You know, with the delay that this had, the whole one day delay it had. Uh, you know, I could have done with the, um, the, the raw, not raw subs, the, um, actual fan subs, but I don't want to do that. So I figured, you know what, let me just wait, and luckily I can get the review out to you guys. I just don't know exactly when it's going to be out, because, of course, I'm doing this, I just got home or whatever, but it will get out to you as soon as possible. Anyways, though, let's talk about what happened in the episode. So, you know, we have the, um, fortune teller running away in the beginning, and as he's running away, the helicopter's still shooting him down. But then the, sh the other helicopter comes in, and it's Byaku's helicopter. He destroys the other helicopter that's f that's been following the, f the fortune teller the whole time. And luckily, it saves the day. So finally, we can see Byaku come in, and he's going to work his way definitely into this place. Now, meanwhile, Makoto and Asahina are still inside talk to Komaru. He's still wondering what the hell it means that he's going to get someone killed. You know, he's trying to dwell on that a little bit. But as he's talking to his sister, you know, the, the, the connection cuts out, so he unfortunately has to stop. But they figure, you know, they can't stay in one spot anyway too much longer, so they decide, you know, let's finally get up and leave. As they're leaving, they run, they run into an old face, Mankata, who, damn, Mankata looks like he's, you know, worse off than he is, I guess. But he's got now, like, like the samurai thing going on where his half face is covered up because he's, he lost his eye, of course. And just in general, his shirt's all messed up, and he just... Looks all all fucked up in general. But what's funny about him is the fact that he has this, the sword, which I think is so badass. Like, I mean, honestly, I think I'm using it for my screenshot. The uh, sword that he's using, which is apparently the blacksmith sword. I think that's awesome. Honestly, I think that's really cool. Um, but he's ready to kill Makoto and Asahina right away as he sees them. So, you know, that's that's something. You know, Makoto has really, like I said, lost his mind. Um, but what's maybe lucky or unlucky is that the robot of the uh, one girl comes in on a self kind of like self running mode gets up somehow it turns into a giant mech you know like i mean honestly come on her wheelchair becomes her legs and you know she has giant arms and stuff gets engaged in battle with um Mikado, which lets makoto and ashihina get away safely meanwhile makata now has to deal with this robot which probably won't be very hard for him but you know, what's cool is we see one scene where he chops the thing's head off and it still just, like, reattaches itself. So, it's not going to be an easy fight for Makata, but he'll figure out a way, I'm pretty sure, to survive that. Now, meanwhile, we go back. This episode's more so orientated towards uh, Kyoko and the other two characters that have been trying to figure out what's going on, you know, with all these deaths and stuff around. It's in general, you know, she's unleashing her detective prowlessness. Um, you know, what's funny is they find the room that the blacksmith was in there, the uh, Izayoi. They find the room, and what's cool about this is they start investigating around, and they start seeing various kind of things. The um, the guy with the hat, though, we learned in the very beginning of the episode, and I kind of skipped over for a reason. We learned that this guy was not an ordinary dude. He apparently was a soldier during the incredibly horrible thing that happened uh, way back when. So he was a soldier during that time period, and he had to deal with various things like traps and, and giant weapons and mech stuff and all that. So... He's kind of a badass. I mean, for the most part, he kicks ass. It's really cool. But we learned that he's not an idiot, really. He's, you know, I, I always kind of thought he was kind of a moron in many ways. I thought he he was hiding some intelligence to him, mind you. But, you know, I, I didn't know for a fact that he was smart. That Which is kind of messed up if you think about it. But as they're investigating this, the scene, which a lot of various things happen. Uh, and I'm not going to go into super detail because of each one. Because that would take me forever. The ultimate high school boxer runs his way in and breaks the, the door down and he fights and engages all of them in combat but what's lucky is that you know he's not paying attention and he gets impaled by a trap that was set up by you know someone in the the, the uh, i guess in the game in general and so what this lets the um the guy with the hat do is talk about some interesting things first off he talks about Juzo's uh, NG code is attacking anyone barehanded because you know what's funny and it's something I noticed but I really didn't comment very much on is that this guy for the ultimate high school boxer is supposed to be you know fighting with his fists and yet he hasn't fought with his fists at all he's always been kicking or using weapons 
And I'm like, you know, I think that's kind of weird. So we do learn that his code, though, was not attacking with his fist, which is interesting. We also learn that the guy with the hat's main code was, you know, his, his penalty was using his left hand. His left hand always had to be closed. It can't be opened. So I think that's interesting. I mean, I didn't even notice him holding his hands closed all the time, which is funny. I mean, probably a lot of people maybe noticed that here and there. But I just thought maybe that was just how his character was drawn. So it was interesting. But so we do learn about that. We also learn, unfortunately, that the girl, the confectioner, is not working with them. You know, she's her, her code against her, her penalty, is that she cannot allow anyone to escape the game. And the thing is, is that apparently behind that door, with, the, with which we saw, which Zoyo uh, discovered, we discovered that that was a secret exit. So she's been trying to stop anyone. So she was actually the one who killed him. Yeah, you know, like, she loved this dude, and she was always treating him really good, and he was one of the few people always by her side, and she kills him. That's messed up. You know, and she tries to, she tries to possess with uh, her, her candy, the boxer, Juzo, but the thing is, is, you know, it doesn't work apparently on him very well. He's able to destroy the mind control in his head using just kind of brute strength. Uh, but what's funny is that when she caused, uh, she causes a trap to open up underneath them, and the guy with the hat you know this i'll probably i probably have this image up he has to unfortunately use his left hand to save her life and that means that he's gonna st start dying because you see already the poison kind of kind of affect him he's able to save uh kyoko but in the same time dies so that, that was i was i wasn't surprised per se that he's gonna die i mean i thought he was gonna die more so toward the later part of this episode i just didn't think of how he's gonna die and you know i felt bad because i mean honestly we just now got acquainted with him but that's how it is, I guess, right? But Kyoko is the one that really is the, you know, notices everything about this. She's the one that started telling about how, how the fact that the confectioner was the one who stabbed the guy because, you know, he's just, he's, he, she, she does not want anyone escaping. And she's the one that starts discovering all these little intricacies with, you know, how every little death has gone down. She still does. I don't think she still knows who the killer is, but I'm pretty sure she's getting close to understanding who it is exactly. Now, the episode ends, though, which is that we have um, Juzo trying to open the door, and, of course, the confectioner stopping him, at least trying to stop him. In the meantime, that allows uh, Kyoko and the um, animator to kind of escape without being noticed. So they, they kind of leave, and, and they talk about various things there, but that wasn't really that important, per se. But we also see, at the same time, Biako get into the main building with people not being very smart and touching bodies around which causes a trap to activate which seems to be sinking the building i want to say that the building is sinking into the water because this is a floating island so most likely now we're going to be on a time limit that's how we're going to do the last several episodes it's going to be a time limit of the fact that now if they want to escape they're going to have to figure out what's going on and deal with the you know place falling down to the ground so that's going to be interesting i'm very curious where they're going to go from that Anyways, yeah, this review was longer than I thought it would be, but I did have a lot of stuff to say about it. Like I said, I do apologize, guys and girls, that I don't have that many images up. It just it works better for me only have a few. I will talk to you all later. Have a great, great night. Bye-bye.